Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday and in this video I wanted to cover um, one of the new features that came out with the latest version of Next.js, version 10, is that they now have image component and image optimization available by default. So it's a new component called image and we're going to take a look at the different ways you can use it and talk about some of its drawbacks. So over here I've got a Next.js application running on version 10 and it, the server's already up and running but I've put a commit right now so if anyone wants to follow along um, that link to the commit will be in the description. So this is the app we're working with. We're just going to be working all in one page and we're going to be covering four different layouts that um, this image component covers. So the way you bring in the image component is you import image from next slash image you don't have to install anything special, it's already all there. So you can see that the only things I'm running are Next, React, and React DOM. So the first thing we're going to cover is Fixed. And Fixed is when you know the dimensions of the image and you don't want them to change at all. So this is maybe for like a logo or an icon or something like that where you always want it to be a fixed um, size. So for example, I've got this uh, Starbucks, uh, don't sue me logo here and I'm going to show it as a fixed image. So here we have image and the cool thing is um, I'm doing this in TypeScript actually so you're going to see that it will give you an error saying the source is missing. That's obvious. So I've got it in public slash Starbucks starbucks.png. Save it. It's still not happy. It wants something called a layout. So layout basically tells it how to process this image. Is it going to be fixed? Is it going to be responsive? And some of the other ones we'll cover below. So this one was going to be fixed. And with fixed, you need width and height. So we're going to say it's a width of 100 and a height of 100. So it's just straight up numbers. I guess they represent pixels. But you don't say like 100 pixels. You just give it the number. Um, and you can always pass all of the different uh, props that you're used to passing to an image, like alt. So we'll just say Starbucks logo here. Save that. Go over to the app. And there we go. There's our fixed um, image. And the cool thing is, what you'll notice is the request down here below is that it has converted this PNG image. So if we go to the source, this was a PNG image and it was 185 kilobytes. So what the next image component through its image optimization has done is it's basically converted this to a WebP, which is a lot smaller size. It's a newer um, standard. And it's also converted the size. So this thing used to be like 1200 pixels or something like that. It's converted it down to 256 because it knows that I'm only gonna be showing it as 100 by 100. So it's taken that image down to under 15 kilobytes from 185. So that's pretty awesome. Fixed is when you know the size. Um, one other thing you'll see here is that Q equals 75. So that's the quality. You can adjust that as needed. 75 is the default. So you can drop that down to say 25. Come back, um, refresh. For some reason it's still requesting it at 75. Oh, it's because it's not Q. It's quality. K refresh. So now we got 25 and it's taken that 15K down to 10K. So you can adjust the quality as needed to the point um, that works for you, but default is 75. So intrinsic, this is basically when you want the image to be responsive but you want to limit how much it will grow. So it will always shrink, but it will never grow past the size you give it. So we're going to say image, and for this one we'll do this house.jpg I have. It's going to be layout intrinsic, and we'll give it a width, and this image is 3000 by 2000, so 3 by 2. So why don't we give it um, a width of 600 and a height of, no, what do we want? 246, so this would be 400, which will be 3 by 2 ratio. So we'll save it like this, come back, and um, see here that it didn't let it grow past 600, but it does let it shrink down. 
so it, it does allow it to be responsive. Why don't we switch over to this responsive layout? So it scrolls down, but it stops it here. And one cool thing is that if we clear this out and refresh it, so you can see that it requests it at 1200 width here. And as we grow it, it's not doing it for this one. Maybe it will do it for the next one. But on smaller devices, it will request a smaller one by default. And if the screen grows, it will request gradually bigger uh, versions of the image. So hopefully we'll see that in the next responsive one. So responsive is when you want it to always basically take up the full width of the container it's in. So it's not going to limit itself um, to the intrinsic size of the image. It's going to keep it growing. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, you can see here, it also converted this JPEG to, to WebP and it shrunk it down to 91 kilobytes from almost 700. So it optimized the image right now. So the great thing about this, um, as opposed to say the one in Gatsby, is Gatsby builds all the images at build time, which if you've got hundreds of images, that can be really slow. This does it all dynamically. Um, so you don't have to, you can just push it out and it will generate these images on the fly, cache them, and so that it can serve them up once they've been uh, created. So we've got source here. We're gonna do the house as well. Actually, why don't we do this llama instead? So llama instead, this one will be layout responsive. We're gonna give it a width and a height again. So why don't we just say uh, 600 and 400. But this time, you'll see that the llama takes up the whole size of this. And as I grow this out, it's gonna keep enlarging, enlarging the, uh, the size of the, um, the image. So down here you can see it first requested a llama of 1920, then 2048, then 3840. So it's basically only going to ask for an image big enough to fill the size of the screen. Another cool thing that we should be able to see if I shrink the height of this is that it loads them all. Actually, it's not doing it. But what it does is it loads them all uh, lazily. So it will basically, um, what's that actually called? It's not lazily. It is called, one sec, just looking through all the different options. Yeah, it is lazy. So loading lazy versus eager. So when the browser detects that it's in or near the viewport, then it will request the image rather than all of them all, all at once. If you do want it to load right away, you can pass in the options of, uh, loading equals eager and um, or another way you can sort of do this uh, is by setting the priority to true to basically preload any images that are above the fold so that you can give the that the best experience and then the ones further down on the fold um, will load as the user scrolls to them so the last one we're going to cover is fill and for fill we're actually going to put it in a div because it's going to fill whatever container it's in not just width-wise, which is what responsive does, but height-wise as well. So why don't we set on here um, a width of, say, 400, oops, 400 pixels and a height of 400 pixels. And then inside of this div, we'll put our image. And why don't we do the llama again, llama.jpg. Layout is fill. and you don't need to pass a width and a height on this because it's going to fill whatever it's container it's in. So the height and width of the image doesn't really matter here. So if we come down, fill. So see this llama like stretched out up here at the top, not down here in fill. The reason for that is because it basically position absolutes the image over top of the div that it's in. But to do that, the div that it's in has to be um, position relative or position absolute. Otherwise, it's going to go to the nearest um, container that that's on, which is the body in this case. So what we can just do here is we can say position relative. And now it will squish this llama into um, this div. 
Now, here's a problem I have with this image component that it doesn't do any cropping. So you have to know the dimensions of the image ahead of time. So unlike tools like Cloudinary or ImageIX, um, which can do sort of on-demand uh, cropping and they can crop in all sorts of different ways like um, crop around faces, crop where there's entropy, the most sort of interesting areas of the of the image. With this um, Next.js, it sort of goes part of the way in that it can resize, but it doesn't have all those additional features that you're going to get from Cloudinary and ImageIX to do on-demand cropping. Like I would love if I'm going to have a square image for it to not squish it, but to crop it. And for me to be able to say like, just crop in the center or crop where there's the most entropy or crop around the faces. So if I'm using Cloudinary or ImageIX, I actually don't know if I would use this image component. Um, Cloudinary has its own React component, maybe ImageIX does as well. And those give you more options that are specific to that tool. Um, so uh, you can see this for sure if I say 100%. See how it just like squishes this, smushes this image down height wise. So that's sort of a bummer I found with the, the uh, Next.js way of doing it. But this is how you use uh, all of the different layouts. So by default, it basically goes off of Next.js does the processing and it, it can grab images from your public folder or wherever you have them. But it does work with Cloudinary and ImageIX. It just won't do any of the cropping stuff. So the way you do that is you actually set up a configuration file, which is called, what is this called? Next.config.js, there we go. So paste this in and we need it to, I'm just gonna copy and paste from their example and then tweak it. So I'm gonna get rid of all of these. So it comes with different loaders and we can say we're gonna use the Cloudinary loader. And when we use the, the loader for Cloudinary or ImageIX, we basically have to tell it what the URL is to go and grab and load these images. Cause it's not gonna do the processing itself. It's just gonna build the URL and let Cloudinary do the processing. So if I were to go look at this Cloudinary image I have of the house, this beginning part sort of res.cloudinary.com slash uh, my name. That's the path that we want. So we'll say path is equal to that. And whenever you change the config, you need to, uh, as it tells me right here, restart the server. So we'll just do that. And when it comes back up, it's gonna try to load all of these images through Cloudinary. And it just so happens that I have all of these same images with the same names in Cloudinary. So that's why it still works the same. And what you can see here is that um, it's pulling the llama from cloudinary.com slash Lee Halliday. And then it fills in a bunch of um, options for Cloudinary and then slash llama. So all you pass in is basically what Cloudinary calls the public ID. It's sort of like the name of the image. So in our case, it's, it's house.jpg. Often in Cloudinary, it's like a random uh, set of characters. So you put in the public ID here of the image that you want. I'm not even sure if you need the slash. Probably you do, but let's see. Close this. No. So you don't even need the slash when you're pulling from Cloudinary. I guess it's smart enough to figure that out and add the slash for us, but it doesn't hurt. So that's how you both use uh, the image optimization and image component with the default Next.js loader and how you can tweak it to use the Cloudinary. Uh, ImageIX is basically the same thing. You just swap this out for ImageIX if you're storing your images there. Um, what it does mean though, is that you would have to do all of your cropping ahead of time, and you should probably know the width and the height or the dimensions of the image. So if it's user generated content, um, I don't know if this tool is the best case for that. I think in that case, you'd probably wanna be using um, something like Cloudinary or ImageIX. 
I forgot to mention the path. It also doesn't need to be only stuff in your public folder. You could have it pointing to your S3 or your, um, your CloudFront, your CDN or something like that. Next.js will pull it down from that path. It will process it and cache it. So it doesn't need to just be local here. So that's the new stuff. Uh, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Hope you're doing well. Take care. Bye.